Hello everyone. When uh, we chose this photo of a couple sitting in the undergrowth somewhere in South Africa, I said to George we would have to explain this carefully, uh, why people would be sitting so casually in a, in a bush. And um, so this video is about our life, uh, living contemplatively in the mountains of KwaZulu-Natal, called the Balele Mountains, where uh, we run a retreat center. Hi, I'm George. Um, and coming from a more reformed background, our contemplative journey started about 20 years ago. And about 12 years ago, we just uh, received the marching orders, if you want to call it that. Uh, and we decided to take the leap to start living more fully a life based on our contemplative spirituality and to start a retreat center. And then we started looking for a place to start such a center. Initially, we didn't know where exactly to look and uh, it was actually by mere chance that in our search we came to a very small village in Pumalanga uh, Wakerstroom. Mm, it's actually on the border between uh, Wakerstroom, oh, Mapumalanga and Kozuru Natal. And, um, so this whole photo slideshow will tell you a little bit about our journey along the way, uh, which is now nine years later. So you will see a photo of the little town of Wakerstroom that really resonated with us and we started looking in the area to see if we could find a suitable place. Uh, one can say it's a one-horse town but it's actually quite vibrant for such a small village. We just love it. Yeah. So we uh, discovered or, or heard about a place and we made a, an appointment with the landowner and one day in the dead of winter we um, left from Rockerstrom and drove around the huge Zayuk Dam, which is now such a wonderful feature for us, and arrived um, at the farm Barrow Field. Barrow Field in the winter of 2013, uh, when we met Johan. And at that stage, the house had been standing empty for six years. So in general, it was in a good condition, but it was overgrown. Yeah, and a bit like a neglected woman. Yeah. Yeah. So we knew there would be a lot of work to be done. Um, but the potential yes, was there. And, and the feeling of it, the place just said, this is it. And we knew that the, the big move lay ahead which we did in, in phases. We had to move such a lot of things, our creative workshops and all the machinery, pottery kilns and all of that. So we had to do it in two runs um, in October and November of 2013. In general, we take November 2013 as our moving date. Yes. So for our anniversaries, we take that date. The 13th of November. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Yeah, so to get everything ready, um, we knew there was a lot of work ahead to get ready to do retreats and to live contemplatively here. And the picture in our minds are pretty much what you see there now, and that was still early days, uh, but the potential was there and we were very excited about the whole uh, mission. But then the cleanup and the renovating started, uh, we cut the grass, and I always feel bad, Matula laughs at me, but the tractor being so naked, but in the meantime, the panels have been restored. I feel better now. <laughs> yeah, and then that's our very humble first vegetable garden, but we were so proud of it and that little lemon tree in the middle. And it took about two months to fix the windmill and the water tank. And during that time, we didn't have running water inside the house. Mm. So the bathrooms were up next. It was actually one big cavernous room that we wanted to turn into two bathrooms. And uh, that um, got the, the next.
next phase going. So that's the picture of uh, an after picture of one of the bathrooms now. The next phase was the kitchen, tiles to be taken off, ceiling to be removed. And this is the final product, an old farmhouse kitchen as it looks now. My pottery studio um, stood unrenovated for a long time. I loved the stones on the, on the roof, but George said they would have to go. And you can see the dent there with the rotten rafters. So the old wool bale store, the roof was taken off and general renovation started. Yeah, 2018, that was the final product. And those light panels make such a difference. It gives the most beautiful light inside and I love working there and uh, also doing workshops there. And that's a more recent picture of Barrowfield. Lovely lush and green after the wonderful rains. So what does it mean for us to live here at the restory and to live contemplatively? We live a life close to nature and the rhythm of the seasons and in the next few slides uh, or pictures uh, we'll show some uh, elements of the seasons and the one following directly is a short video of the river flowing strongly. Um, How the river in flood is always such a happening. Autumns are often a little bit pink here with beautiful cosmos and um, we love the, the, the mild days of autumn here. Winters are much colder. It's not snowing every year. This was in 2016. The people who have been living here for a long time, they report of snow falls almost annually, but uh, Nowadays it's not that regular, but it's still very, very cold. Spring is lovely and lush and beautiful new growth. Comes very late, almost uh, in November, I would say. So six months bleak landscapes and six months lovely green. The sunsets are just incredible. We try not to miss one of them. Very early on, we started with a vegetable patch. And a our, decent one. A decent one. <laughs> and our assistant, our associate, Skumbuzo, is such a gem. Uh, without him, we couldn't get all the, the fruit from the vegetable garden yeah. that we had. And that we then take and prepare from scratch and um, love using as much as we can from our own garden, living, uh, planting and growing organically as much as possible. And then Sebastian um, came to live with us in 2014. He's a family member and he loves cooking. So he became our in-house chef that does our, all the retreat cooking, lovely fresh food. And everybody says, do you eat like this every day? And we can honestly say we do. He forms a very important part of the rest trees nurturing. The mainstay of our lifestyle here is contemplative living, uh, based on contemplative spirituality and contemplative practices like silence, contemplative uh, sits, uh, meditation, but then also a lot of reading up contemplative studying and our own writing also play uh, plays a big part uh, in our practices. In, in our creative life I'm a potter, I love working um, mostly handwork and in stoneware. 
I do woodwork, uh, also part of our creativity, but more and more we discover part of our spirituality. Yeah, in the creativity we love sculpting together, that's something we do together, mixing mediums like clay and stone, and um, very rewarding to do that together. So what do we have to offer here as a retreat center? We are a very small retreat center. We can take at most six people here in the house. And being such a small retreat center, it, our retreats tend to be very intimate and we can plan the program to be tailor-made. Uh, so that gives us some leeway as well. Quiet days down by the river, lovely to sit there or in the garden, experiencing nature. Or group retreats where they often come with a theme that they would like to delve into and then we, we would prepare a program. Private retreats either for individuals or couples. And then mindfulness retreats where we do present moment activities like collecting your own salad ingredients. Contemplative photography retreats are very rewarding in this beautiful area. Pottery workshops that's very popular and that I love giving in the, in the studio. And our creativity retreats that um, has more mediums than just clay that we use in the program. And then we also have general workshops, team building for either small groups or bigger groups. That particular, this particular group came for a more creative session where they did some stone balancing uh, on the stone walls here in the garden. <laughs> that was such fun. We also do spiritual direction sessions, either online or here at the restaurant. And then where food is concerned, um, preparing food from scratch um, is very important for us. Sebastian is brilliant at that. And then also to present it beautifully to our guests and to us. And it forms a very big part of uh, making people feel at home. And uh, it also lends to the sense of community. Our conversations around the table are usually the very meaningful and, and deep conversations. We also do guided walking down at the river and in sections of the farm. It's safe and it's beautiful. Uh, especially after such a beautiful rainy season as this year, there's the waterfall here on the farm. Sebastian loves taking people there. And the very brave do what this friend does and goes under the waterfall. We are excited about a new project that we are doing along with our landlord, Johan. It's converting an old stone ruin close to the house into a small chapel. We're not quite sure what the origins of this little building is. In all probability, it was the first building uh, erected here before they moved into the proper homestead. But... Uh, yeah, we think about maybe around 150 years mm, old or so. And the builder, Stephen, who is an artist in his own right, uh, is ideal for the task. They're building up the gables. And then my personal favorite, wait for it, is the gothic window that was put in and that lent such a beautiful sacred um, feeling to the chapel. So looking back and casting an eye to the future where we are now, we look back with a sense of deep gratitude. We received so much support and help along the way. Um, it meant such so much to us. Uh, for that we are very, very grateful. 
Yeah, we really want to thank people and everybody for their goodwill. And also looking ahead to the adventure with uh, this new video uh, video service. service that we want to give. And um, we would love to continue on this journey with you. So we'll chat again soon. Thank you that we are able to share this with you and keep well.